Good morning, dear students. As part of the orientation class, I would like to introduce you to the syllabus first in humanities uh, of uh, professional communication is one paper and life skill is another paper. Both consist of several modules. Today we'll be talking about life skills and the modules and the different topics that come under this module. The paper life skill would be completed in the first semester itself and along with the professional communication and you will be uh, appearing for this uh, exam in the first semester itself. Both the paper consists of 50 marks with uh, continuous internal evaluation and end semester examination, 50 marks each for both, and 50 marks each for professional communication also, with continuous uh, internal evaluation and end semester examination for that paper also. In total, you will be appearing for 200 marks. By continuous internal evaluation, Regarding life skill paper, we mean the marks, 50 marks being divided into <clears throat> attendance marks 10, regular assessment marks 15, and series test 25 marks. By attendance, you mean you will be attending all the classes. And by regular assessment, we mean Group discussion, group discussion, by, by group discussion we mean we would create groups of about six students each and engage them on a group discussion on different topics for about 20 minutes. And during this time, the parameters that will be taken for evaluating would be communication skills, three marks, subject clarity, two marks, group dynamics, two marks, Behaviors and mannerisms, two marks. That is, for group discussion, the marks would be nine. This comes under regular assessment. Along with this, we have the presentation skills, which consists of six marks. Here, you will be given a suitable topic and would be asked to prepare a presentation, preferably a PowerPoint presentation, for about 10 minutes. The parameters for this evaluation would be communication skills, two marks, platform skills, two marks, and subject clarity or knowledge on the topic, two marks. That would be totaling 50 marks. That is, continuous internal evaluation comes under all these. All these topics comes under continuous internal evaluation. Next comes the end semester examination, and this also consists of 50 marks, where you will be given a case study for 25 marks and short answer questions for 25 marks. There will be one question from each module, five questions in total, five marks each. Each question should be written in about 400 words. And the parameters to be used for evaluation would be content clarity, like subject knowledge, the way you present it, and how you organize your content, the matter, how you organize your subject matter. The case study, which consists of 25 marks, would be in this pattern. That is, the students will be given a case study with questions at the end. They will have to analyze the case and answer the questions at the end. The parameters to be used for evaluation are as you will be asked to analyze the case situation. There would be many characters in the case. Uh, and you would be asked to identify the characters, why they behave such and such a manner, mm, what are the problems, uh, why do such characters behave in such a manner. In that way, you will have to identify the problem, both major and minor problems. Then you will bring out the solution. You will be thinking about certain solutions, certain alternatives to the problem. Then you will be analyzing each alternative against that problem, then you will have to identify the best alternative 
and then you will have to implement that solution and come to the conclusion why you have chosen such and such a solution to that problem. <coughs> Next comes, uh, I would like uh, I would like you to get an awareness about the syllabus. There will be five modules in this paper, which includes uh, theory as well as lab activities. From module one to five, there are several tab, uh, definitions or terminologies which will have to be aware with, aware of, and I'll go through the modules separately. In the module one, it is an overview of life skills. In this module, you will have to understand the meaning and significance of life skills uh, about the different elements of life skills like self-awareness, empathy, critical thinking, creative thinking, decision making, problem solving, effective communication, interpersonal relationships, coping with progress, uh, I mean, co sorry, coping with stress, coping with emotion. Uh, then you'll have to learn about life skill for professionals like positive thinking, right attitude, having, underst having to understand the big picture, learning skills, research skills, uh, setting goals, achieving them, helping others, leadership, motivation, self-motivation, motivating others, personality development, uh, intelligence uh, quotient, emotion, uh, emotional quotient. Uh, all these things you will be learning in this module. You don't have to be, you don't have to bother about the definitions now, as of now, I'm just introducing you to the topics. We'll be learning about all these topics in detail. You'll be learning all the definitions in detail in the coming classes. I'm just giving you an introduction to the modules to get an awareness about the modules. Then you become to the second module. There we'll be learning about self-definition, self-awareness, uh, uh, coping with stress and emotion, uh, the emotional quotient, how you are, uh, have to manage your emotions, how you have to control your emotions, how you have to react to certain situations, uh, human values, tools and techniques of self-awareness, uh, meditation, mindfulness, etc. Then you have to learn about stress management, stress, reasons and effects of stress, identifying stress, uh, uh, techniques, uh, approaches, uh, all these things. Uh, then you have to learn about coping with emotions, identifying and managing emotions, the harmful ways of dealing with emotions, the relaxation techniques, etc. Then we move on to the next uh, uh, item in this same module. We'll have to learn about time-tested principles, time-tested values, morals, integrity, virtues, living peacefully, caring, sharing, uh, honesty, courage, uh, valuing time, time management. That's a very important thing for you uh, in your coming days at college. Uh, cooperation, commitment, self-confidence, character, uh, avoiding procrastination. Uh, you might understand the word procrastination, putting things away and away for the uh, coming, um, coming hours or coming days. That is not a good time management. You will be if you're procrastinating your studies, you will have to suffer during the exams. Uh, how to avoid procrastination? Uh, and then again, the sense of engineering ethics. These are the things you'll be studying in module two. Now coming over to module three. Uh, these are the qualities for, uh, considered as very important for the 21st century. Uh, like creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, problem solving, decision making, need for creativity in the 20th century as such, imagination, intuition, your experience, uh, how you how you can turn your experience into a very profitable thing for yourself, uh, the uh, functions of the left brain and the right brain, uh, how you can be multiple tasking, uh, 
in your uh, school, uh, college, and your uh, workplace. Problem solving techniques all come under this module. Uh, mind mapping, uh, scientific temperament, and logical thinking. These things you will be needing very much in your project works. Then we come over to the module four, uh, which here we have the group and team dynamics. You will be getting many group discussions, and uh, you can we can conduct many uh, topics, uh, debate on topics. That way, the group dynamics will be improved among you. Uh, how you can clarify your uh, opinions, how you can put forth the opinions, how you can express it, how you how you can make the other person believe in it, and how you can work in team spirit. Uh, these are dynamic techniques, group uh, techniques, and managing conflict, managing team performances. Uh, these come under module four. And finally, we have module five, which is increasing the power of leadership, the leadership framework, the entrepreneurial and uh, the entrepreneurial and moral uh, leadership, a vision, how you can create a vision and you can put it into action, uh, the cultural dimensions, uh, managing diverse sh stakeholders. Uh, you, uh, you can understand the word of stakeholders if if you're running a business, uh, the people uh, concerned, the people related to it, the people involved with it are all stakeholders. Uh, crisis management is another topic which we'll be dealing in module five. The types of leadership, the traits you will have to do away with, uh, the levels of the levels and the different levels of leadership. Uh, leadership grid. Uh, effective leaders. These things you will be understanding in module five. And finally, you have the lab activities also. That is, uh, the, there are two types of lab activities, verbal and nonverbal. In the verbal, we have effective communication and presentation skills, the different kinds of communication, the flow of communication, the communication network, the types of barriers, in communication, the miscommunication, if you are giving the wrong information or if you are not giving the intended information. The, by flow of communication, we mean uh, the easy flow or the blocked flow or the checked flow, uh, the flow of communication downward or upward or in a horizontal way, the levels of uh, managerial staff. These, the, these are different types of communication. Uh, then you have the learning styles, whether it is visual or oral or verbal or kinesthetic, uh, active listening while learning, the note-taking skill. You will be learning the note-taking note skill, whether you have you just draw out the outline, then you go deeper into it. Then we have the memory techniques. Uh, like uh, fla using flashcards, keywords, outlines, spider diagrams, mind mapping, uh, how you develop ideas from small, small things. Then we have the time management, uh, managing distractions, calendars and checklists, prioritizing, goal setting. Uh, these things come under verbal communication. Then we have the nonverbal communication, uh, that is the body language, uh, Forms of nonverbal communication, interpreting uh, would include interpreting body language like kinesics, uh, proxemics, how you effectively use your body language to communicate in a multicultural environment. Finally, in this syllabus, uh, I would ask you to refer to the books in the library. You can visit our website, the college website of the college, and you might uh, understand how many books are available on online uh, e-library uh, there are almost uh, altogether we have uh, nine, almost 10,000 books and we have a percentage of books online we you can refer to the many books uh, through online also from a library and for this paper you will have to visit uh, visit these uh, uh, visit the library through online and check upon some of the books. 
like Shiva Keras, uh, you can win. And the Ace of Soft Skills, Attitude, Communication, Etiquette for Success by Pearson. Uh, there are so many books you'll have to, you can refer. That's all about the syllabus. Uh, about the professional communication paper, I'll be talking to you in the next class. What I've said is about soft skills and the modules, uh, verbal and no, uh, non-verbal lab activities and how much marks this paper would carry. That is 100 marks, 50 on continuous internal evaluation and 50 on end semester examination. That is continuous internal evaluation would include attendance, regular assessment. That is regular assessment would be uh, group discussions and presentation skills throughout the semester and uh, the series test uh, that is only one test and this test would include first three modules with 25 marks and the end semester examination would include short answer questions and case studies i hope i'm clear uh, now i'll go to the next uh, part of this session that is, I'll give you an introduction on life skills. Uh, this, is, uh, this is part of the first module. Uh, and uh, it's just an you know, overview of life skills. You know, this is, uh, after this introduction, you will be getting classes on, I told you, all the, uh, on separate definitions, on the terminologies, uh, on the elements of life skills like empathy, critical thinking, creative thinking, decision making. I'm not going to, I'm not going to all these um, terminology in this class. This is just an introduction, and let us start with life skills. What is life skill? As uh, in contradiction to hard skill we have soft skills. So life skill is considered a term encompassing a whole range of abilities from technical skill to emotional intelligence. What do we mean by emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence would mean to include uh, an understanding of your emotions, how you can manage your emotions, how you can manage your anger, how you can manage your sorrow, how you can understand the other person's emotions, how you can understand your emotions, how you can convert into positivity, how you can understand the other person and uh, behave with them, interact with him in a more positive manner, how you can uh, channel your emotions into a, uh, into by converting uh, those emotions into uh, uh, by, by managing those emotions to have a better quality of life, uh, how you can live your life to your potential in spite of each person having different types of characteristic features. The skills are divided broadly into two categories. I spoke about hard skill, which is technical, and soft skill, which is non-technical. Hard skill can be acquired from your college. Now you have come to become engineers. You can be a mechanical engineer, you can be an electrical engineer, you can be a computer science engineer but all of you have to acquire soft skills. It is not something that can be acquired as such. It is acquired through your experiences, through your interactions. Soft skills complement hard skills, and that makes your effort, your effort in your uh, teamwork, your effort in your group, group dynamics, your effort in your work life, much more effective. As important as hard or technical skills are, both are important, hard skills as well as soft skills. The corporate world, the corporate world means the industrial world where you will be working one day. The industrial world puts tremendous emphasis, tremendous importance on soft skills. 
corporates look out and recruit people with exceptional soft skills. <clears throat> Among the pool of technically qualified people, they recruit people with technical skills, with hard skills, how good an engineer you are. But nowadays, the, the organization gives equal importance to employees with great soft skills. It is not enough necessarily, it is not enough if you just uh, acquire a skill, if you have to be uh, working in, in a positive atmosphere, you have to impart your positivity to the other team members. The corporate world looks for such people who are well-groomed, that is, who are technically savvy, but also have the complementary soft skills. So nowadays we, are, we see that steps are being taken to achieve a high degree of soft skill literacy for which this concept of soft skill has come down, has uh, filtered into the campus world as well as the corporate world. Even during your campus life, you will need your soft skill as much as you are acquiring your hard skill. It is generally considered a good idea to inculcate a measure of soft skill into anyone's skill set. That is, the hard skill is the skill set you are acquiring. And you have to inculcate a measure of soft skill into that as a way of charging you with skills for life and as a lesson in your civic life. It, soft skills will help you to accomplish your ambitions and live life to your potential. Uh, there is not definite. There is not def, uh, a clear definition for life skill is not available, but it makes. Uh, but it is more or less relevant depending on your life circumstances, the culture you're living in, the belief you're carrying, your age group, the geographical location, etc. The most important life skill is the ability to learn. I told you there are many elements of life skills and um, uh, there are many elements in life skills and uh, it varies from person to person. Uh, one person uh, may be very brave, the other person may not be very brave. One person may be able to control his uh, emotions, the other person may not be able to control his emotions. So these are different type of life skills in different uh, emotion, in different people. So it is just the ability to attune yourself to that environment. That is what you call a, a toned life skill. How you can live happily in a situ in a in an in an environment. In a, if it is if it is in a campus or if it in your or, or if it is in your workplace. Uh, so you have got to understand that life skills are not always taught directly, but often learned indirectly through experience and practice. They are one of the crucial in elements uh, in determining your uh, sustainability uh, in your per uh, how you can sustain how you can sustain in a professional life, how you can sustain personally and how you can improve um, the quality of your life. It is related to the mind and people that provide the means for an individual to be successful and positive while taking. Um, it is related to uh, life skills or competencies related to the mind and you have to be aware of yourself. You have got to connect with the others around you. You have to reflect uh, on the uh, thoughts and feelings in you. You have to reflect on the thoughts and feelings that you are sh uh, you're sharing with others. Uh, because both you and the other person is going to generate a change. And you have to stay rooted in that time-tested values and principles. Because... Uh, these principles have been, by time tested, I mean these principles have been handed over to us through generations and generations. So the dichotomy between who we are and what we do, 
that is very much important you by me by meaning who we are means you have got a, a position in the society you are provided with a slot in the society you decide who you are what you want to become you acquire that knowledge and you um, produce that knowledge into a skill into the uh, and that skill is being introduced to the society by you now uh, this is uh, a uh, what we call uh, a successful person who has acquired the life skill he can turn his skill into positivity into something uh, that is good for the community so that is why i said soft skill is related to personality and an important aspect of one's personality is derived from communication skills verbal and nonverbal uh, another element which you would be in need in which you would have to acquire as a life skill is uh, um, the ability to talk um, eloquently the ability to express your thoughts your ideas your concepts uh, another is uh, by communication skill i mean you have to be uh, uh, you have to increase your lexicology uh you have to have a knowledge of uh, phonetics accent uh also personality is a continuum it is evolved through life experiences so uh, now that you are entering college you are just out of school but when you are getting out of college you become more of an adult and you have been you might have evol evolved into another uh, not into another into a more mature person so what are the characteristics of soft skills soft skills are those skills over and above the technical knowledge and experience in the chosen field that is uh, it is required for an individual uh, the soft skills are skills required for an individual to relate to and survive and succeed in an environment uh, some things need to be put forth here number 1 soft skill is not just a pleasing personality or just smooth talking or you have command of a, a language it is a combination of all these all these things and many more attitudes this combination varies from time to time uh, uh, what uh, uh, you call a pleasing personality in this part of the world would not be uh, a pleasing personality in another part of the world so it would uh, so this combination what i said uh, varies from t not only from time to time it varies from culture to culture situation to situation etc another thing another characteristic of soft skill is it is possible to recognize the presence and absence of soft skills in an individual um, in fact you can understand whether uh, uh, a such and such a person uh this do pos uh, this pos uh, you can uh, you can just uh, um, identify whether uh, if you are going for an interview the corporate managers they can identify whether you are uh, uh, re reaching that mark where of soft uh, f of which they have been expecting from you uh, like uh, whether the soft skill which they thought which they expect from you is what you would be contributing to the uh, company whether you work in an industry uh, whether be it it or manufacturing or family business or multinational corporation soft skills are absolutely essential for success hence it makes sense that soft skills apply uh, to all human endeavors and to all industries Yeah. how different is it from iq soft skill quotient let let me call it as ssq and uh, iq intelligence quotient intelligence quotient how different is ssq and iq you cannot assign an ssq to an individual like you can conduct a score uh, for iq by giving many um, questions or problems and you can 
assess a person's score on that, how intelligent he is. But an SSQ cannot be uh, uh, measured or identified. Um, so it is difficult to measure soft skill. This is because soft skills are specifically uh, required and vary, vary from person to person, culture to culture and situation to situation. Yeah. Uh, soft skills, how do you acquire soft skills? How, how do you learn soft skills? Soft skills are learned more by survival instincts. That is, you're put in different, different situations. And in each situation, you come out with flying colors. You come out without burning your fingers. That is, way, that is the way how you get fine-tuned in difficult situations, in when you encounter when you're encountered with problems, how you come out with, uh, uh, how you understand the problem, how the problem solving techniques, these things uh, make you more skilled in soft, uh, soft skill, wherein you are fine tuned and you adapt to the environment. But uh, uh, engineering principles, it becomes different from soft skills, but the way in which is, it is learned, it is learned formally. But as I said, soft skills are learned by survival instincts. You come to college, you refer to your textbooks, you refer to different theories of engineering principles. That way you become uh, thorough in your hard skill but soft skills are learned more by survival instincts. If you come to the Indian context, uh, what I mean by cult cultural uh, soft skills can be termed how good it is in accordance with the culture. I said it earlier. So it is culture dependent. What do you mean by that? In the Indian context, being assertive and vocal, assertive and vocal, I hope you understand. That is, you put your subject matter or you put your word assertively. You put forth it in, a, in an uh, assertive manner. But this will be considered as poor soft uh, skills in the Indian culture. But in the United States, the lack of these qualities will be termed as weakness. There you have to be more vocal. You have to put forth your uh, opinions in a straightforward manner. So that is why I said soft skills can be culture dependent. What are the misconceptions? Uh, that is, what, uh, what are the wrong things we understand about soft skills? We think that soft skills uh, equals good language, command and vocabulary. We believe that just because, just because a person has good language and good lexicology, he is a person well, uh, uh, Attuned or well, I'm mean, sorry, well tuned, uh, well toned to the uh, soft skill qualities. Uh, that is a person who is a good talker. Another misconception is that uh, it is essential to management jobs alone and not to technical jobs. Both technical jobs and management jobs, both require soft skills. It's another belief, another misconception is that uh, just because you have a hard skill, the need for soft skill is not there. That is completely a misguided thought. Uh, hard skills should be supplemented with soft skills. Another misconception is that People with soft skill are born, not made. That is another wrong idea about soft skill. It is just a presupposition that soft skills run in the blood. Of course, it can be honed like a singing talent. Or, uh, or if you want to be a good singer, you should have the basic talent in you. In that way, uh, you have certain qualities but you awaken the sleeping giant in you to be better equipped in soft skills. For example, there are people who say, I'm a very shy individual. Oh, I am 
Now, I'm, I'm not a politician to keep talking, or this is not like programming or riding a bike that can be learned easily. But all these arguments just presuppose, just believe in the idea that soft skills cannot be made or honed or, sh or sharpened. Uh, another, uh, what I said earlier about words and languages, soft skill equals good language command and vocabulary. It is a wrong thought. It is a misconception. Words and languages are sh uh, surely important. But you have just being uh, vociferous with your words or using mere empty poetic words, uh, these are just uh, not a measure of possessing soft skills. Knowledge of uh, the correct language or the right language to apply it at the right time and the right place, that makes a person uh, equipped with soft skill. Just because you have a large uh, amount of words in your dictionary, in your personal dictionary, that doesn't mean that you have uh, exceptional soft skill. Speak at the right moment in the right manner. Another is, uh, the same, it goes on the same um, thought line. Soft skill is associated with excessive oral communication. Uh, this is not a panacea to better soft skills. Panacea means this is not a, uh, a medicine to better soft skills. Soft skill is not necessary for technical job is another misconception. But... Whatever, whatever be the nature of the job you are in, whether it is technical, managerial, or administrative, soft skills are absolutely essential. You cannot develop soft skills just in time before taking on a managerial role. I told you, it is a survival instinct. You have to acquire it through your uh, long period of experiences, your college life, your work life, etc. You, the time you spend with your family, your friends, all these are periods during which you will be acquiring this soft skill through learning and experiencing things. What are the dimensions? Let me talk about the dimensions of soft skill. Uh, soft skill comprises three dimensions, A, C, E. A stands for attitude, C for communication, and E for etiquette. What is attitude? It is a fundamental aspect of soft skill and can be divided into attitude about self and attitude towards others. Oftentimes, we understand that it is a lack of attitude that becomes the root cause for poor communication ensuing soft skills. So how do you develop a good attitude. Attitude is about having the right mental makeup and a desire to interact with the people and environment. It requires willingness and ability to fine tune and blend yourself with the environment. How do you blend yourself with the environment? You understand the you take the correct attitude. You support the other person. You uh, understand why the other person is reacting in such a way. You behave with them in, or her in such a way that you encourage them to grow as much as you are growing in your uh, career, life, career life or in your path to acquiring knowledge. Every interaction a person has with another reflects his attitude. How a person reacts in good and bad situations, during calm period times, during stormy times, stormy means during high, highly emotional times. Uh, these interactions, are, these interpersonal, react, uh, interpersonal uh, behavior is always monitored or watched by the community. If you're in college, by your other friends, by your teachers, if you're in, uh, working in a uh, company, by your management, the behavior, the, your attitude, this is always being watched upon, monitored. It is therefore crucial 
very important to keep a positive and professional attitude and demeanor and a good, uh, happy uh, demeanor, mm. no matter what the circumstances are. Attitudes can be positive and negative. They can be optimistic or pessimistic. They can be flexible or stubborn. They can be, uh, you can be motivated or demotivated. You can, mm. Attitudes can be uh, humble. You can become a humble person or you can become a, an arrogant person. Uh, you, you are a driven person. Dri by driven, you mean uh, you can be an active person or you can be a possessive person. You can be a measured or a reactive person. By measured means uh, you keep your emotions and all uh, expressions under control. You just react. Uh, you're not overreactive. You are just uh, measuring and controlling. You're keeping a check upon your thoughts and emotions by not displaying too much of it. It is your choice to be any of these. So in most cases, we understand um, that uh, the first attitude, that is if you are considering positive and negative, if you are considering optimistic or pessimistic, if you are considering flexible or stubborn, it is always the first attitude that is considered as better than the other, but the exact, uh, but one, have, one has to remember that it is the exact situation for exercising soft skills uh, that has to um, be considered. Sometimes uh, you might be thinking that it is a negative, um, it is a positive. Uh, you might be thinking that you have to take the positive decision, but the negative decisions can sometimes be applicable and uh, do fine for the situation. Uh, sometimes a flexible uh, attitude can do good, but on other occasions, the stubborn attitude can also do good. So it is the ability to, to react to that situation and to pick up on that uh, attitude, which will make you a better person in life skill. Next, ACE. We were talking about the dimensions of soft skill. Uh, next, ACE is communication. What is communication? It is the ability to express your attitude in a form that can effectively reach the audience to whom you are intending to receive it. And you persuade them through that communication and you, uh, because it is your requirement for the intended action. You want some sort of action from that person, from the receiver. So you your communication should be transparent. We understand that the, in the Indian situation, we need to communicate with the world effectively because we people are going abroad and to other states for work uh, because we are, uh, our, uh, our work, uh, our work uh, compels us to travel to other places and the job markets are available to in the other places for us and we uh, seek jobs from other countries from other states so we need to communicate with other professionals and uh, we need to understand their culture their body language their way of expressing things so uh, this way of communication need to be uh, understood in a, in a better way then comes etiquette. What is etiquette? Etiquette are those commonly accepted protocols, norms, and conventions uh, that we that is needed to be that are needed to be followed to achieve effective communication. Etiquette can be divided into three parts: media etiquette, travel etiquette, and miscellaneous etiquette. Media by media etiquette we mean the online etiquette. How much if you're working in a corporate, uh, if you're working in a company, uh, how much of uh, etic uh, media you can be uh, using, how much of uh, information can go outside of the company, how you can manage that information, how much uh, uh, knowledge about a product should go to your customer. Uh, these things are called media etiquette, travel etiquette while traveling. Uh, the way you should behave yourself, your dress code, uh, how 
you can behave yourself in a particular place. Uh, these things are travel etiquette. And by miscellaneous etiquette, we mean the shake hand, the bowing down to greet someone, etc. These are, uh, in, in, in particular cultures, we use, um, in Indian culture, we use namaste, whereas in other cultures, uh, they would shake hands with us. These are called miscellaneous etiquette. <coughs> so we understand that to understand, uh, to uh, sorry, to succeed in any chosen profession or activity, one must want to do that profession or activity. That is, I stress, want to do. You want to do that profession, you should be passionate about it. Otherwise, success is not guaranteed for you. The attitude component here is nothing but this wanting to do something. You build on this strong foundation of wanting to do. You gain that knowledge, the basic knowledge of what to do with that wanting to do. So you, you want to do something, you know, you, you acquire that knowledge. That is, you want to do, that is here. Here you are acquiring that knowledge for soft skills. Uh, if, for example, if the chosen field was say software, that the knowledge component would map to knowing about programming languages, tools, developing tools and databases. By and large, as strong basic knowledge is essential for success uh, in the chosen field, so also communication is essential for success in soft skills. Raw knowledge by itself would not be sufficient to succeed. A practitioner should be able to adopt and fine-tune and apply that knowledge gained to different scenarios and situations. So here, the want to do becomes what to do and then how to do. This how to do builds upon knowledge and graduates to skills. You want, you're wanting to do something, you acquire that knowledge uh, and after that knowledge comes in, you, you, you decide what to do. After deciding what to do, you decide how to do it. That is, you build upon the knowledge and this knowledge graduates to skills. So these are skills that, is re that are relevant to the global market that we must hang on to and further develop. That is developing the hard skill and uh, putting this hard skill in combination with your soft skill, with your attitudes, with the, uh, with the, with the uh, ability to communicate to the society through your uh, decision-making skill, through your problem-solving techniques, through your uh, uh, controlled or measured emotions. Uh, all these span multiple and diverse subjects like psychology, human behavior, language skills. So we understand that these are the skills relevant to the global marketplace. So you need to develop these skills by honing and polishing them and by giving them proper training and try to avoid the negativity, try to avoid the traits that will be detrimental to your success. Next, we move on to the changing business environment and its impact on soft skills. By business environment, you understand the companies you will be working one day. Uh, and nowadays we hear the term global village. The cross, the cross border workflow has necessarily increased the ways of communication thus placing additional demand on soft skills. The quantity and diversity of interactions have increased substantially, bringing around challenges. For example, if you take the manufacturing industry, raw materials come from India, assembling takes place in Taiwan, 
the finished goods may be transported to or sold in the US. Or if you take another example, uh, an employee in Australia may enter his expense report, uh, his expenditure report into a central system, uh, which may be progressed, uh, processed uh, by the BPO uh, outfit in India, and the payment may be made through an American bank. Therefore, the, we see that in, in this global village, in this uh, scenario of working uh, in an industry involves three challenges. That Those are linguistic challenges, cultural challenges, and the different media of communication and collaboration. What do you mean by linguistic challenges? Linguistic is the study of language. An individual should be able to articulate the thoughts so as to cross the language barrier. Uh, for example, we have our own mother tongue has different accents, intonations. Uh, in the same way, in the same manner, the English language has different accents. Uh, accents, uh, intonation. You have the American accent. You have the British accent. You have the Australian accent. Australian accent. You have the Indian accent. Uh, in the same way, we have different intonations. Uh, we have like the fall and rise of sentences and words. Mm, the American and the British spellings are different. Uh, then we have the cultural challenges. The diversity of cultures in different countries has necessitated that people adopt themselves to the cultures of each of these countries. For example, if there is a team, if you are working in another place, if there is a team, people from different states or people from different countries or people from dist different districts will be in that team. And you have got to interact with people from uh, other states or other districts or other countries. And this means adapting uh, to a different culture. Adaptation thus becomes a serious challenge. This is what we call cultural challenge. Then we have to, uh, the different media of communication and collaboration. The effect of technology, as you know, you all are technological students. The effect of technology is at the highest level. So this type of communication and collaboration has to be effective through various means like email, video conference, chatting, phone calls, uh, video face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Uh, so these are the uh, changing business environment uh, uh, challenges we face in the changing business environment. Uh, and even because of these challenges, because of the in advent of technology and the changing technological uh, methods, the soft skills also is infiltrated into these um, uh, advances or these um, improvements. Uh, and so, we understand that hard skill should be complemented with soft skill. As we understand the, uh, the linguistic challenges, the cultural challenges, the different types of communication and collaboration, all these involves soft skills also. Let us go on to the next topic of the current trends in the industry. What are the current trends? There are a few uh, numbering, almost 10. To name a few, personality development is one. That is, it is a must for leadership and career growth. Uh, another is soft. Another soft skill. Another is soft skill as uh, we have been discussing all along in this class. It is, as I said earlier, demanded by every employer. Then you have the communication skill, the spoken English, phonetics, accent, intonation, etc. Another trend is you have to write your resume or your curriculum vitae. This is the first step forward to your uh, acquiring a job. You have to uh, learn to sell yourself. What are your qualities? First, understand your qualities. You are the person who can understand you better. So you have to understand how to write your resume. Uh, then another uh, current trend is group discussion. It is a test of your soft skills. Always try to uh, include yourself in the group discussion. 
let your exp uh, ideas come out let them be expressed another is how to face job interviews the gateway to the job market uh, here is where the first item of personality development comes in uh, job interviews in job interviews you are assessed by your body language the way you present your skill the way you produce your content the way you express yourself positively how you would be um, developing um, how you would, how you would be making decisions in a particular situation how the group dynamics would be working out for you these things will be assessed in your job interviews uh, another current trend in today's uh, uh, industry is enhancing a speaking listening and writing skills to create an impression uh, always speak try to speak the right words uh, express yourself as a happy person uh, listen for the listen and while listening and reading uh, look for the gist of the uh, content first look for the gist then go into the uh, deeper details and then uh, try to produce out of it then uh, another thing is acquaint yourself with e-learning concepts and techniques uh, like i said earlier our library has so many e-learning uh, e-books so you will be visiting you can visit them uh, acquaint yourself with e-learning concepts or don't uh, always go for the written word always uh, sometimes you can check out with uh, f check out for concepts through e-learning uh, and finally uh, the another current trend in the industry is massive open online course m o o c this is a course which integrates soft skills and hard skills into one platform as i said earlier the corporates are looking um, they uh, looking for a soft skill person in the technical pool so every individual uh, the industry understands that every individual possesses a mix of contrasting personalities however it is important to reflect upon one once career aspiration and build the personality profile over time to suit the need uh, one thing i would like to stress here is the two dichotomies of personality are extraversion and introversion what do you mean by this sentence the two dichotomies means the two ends the two contrasting ends now, one is extravert the other is introvert so it's a it has been a misconception that only extroverts uh, become successful in life but the concept has been overturned and both introverts and extroverts are considered as beneficial to the Uh, society as well as the industry so we see the current trend that of characteristics these both characteristics are used by employers to assess or develop or oh, their industry as well as to assess and develop the group or, or to group employees Uh, however the whatever be the personality you choose the most important thing to bear in mind is that one's personality radiates itself as a signal in all directions as i told you uh, no importance is uh, no uh, uh, overdue importance is given to an extrovert or introvert the companies are assessing each uh, of the personalities whether you are an extrovert or an introvert uh, and assessing the bo both the personalities and in order to develop the companies they are utilizing both these types of personalities for their uh, utility it is observed in its minute detail the companies are observe observing uh, these qualities in its minute detail and they take this reality and they're trying to take this reality 
to utilize this reality to their uh, advantage. Uh, so, uh, as I said, both the personalities have their equal importance and one does not supersede the other. Uh, another thing is uh, soft skill development. So far, we have been talking about the importance of soft skill, how, how the companies and the society is uh, watching upon the soft skilled uh, quality, soft skilled elements, uh, how much of contribution, how much it can be acquired, how much it can be toned. Uh, now, what are the measures? How do you develop it? Uh, soft skill development has become extremely popular uh, and is being emphasized in various professional courses. You see, now this course is being introduced into uh, this uh, technological uh, uh, university. You might be thinking you are here to become engineers. Why do we have to study all these soft skill uh, qualities? But in many institutions, hard uh, we understand Hard skill development and soft skill development are both being given equal importance. Uh, it has become so overwhelmingly uh, larger that nowadays soft skill is being taught at, at, ma at, as, um, at master's level in several institutions because a significantly large proportion of successes in any business depends on interpersonal relations and communications. Just the uh, acquiring of hard skill is not sufficient for the development of the business. Also, the hard skill accomplishment uh, will always remain the same. Most employees are now prone to laying bring, uh, greater emphasis on soft skill development. What is soft skill development actually? It can be defined as a process of development of the human psyche and personalities that a person becomes more social and acceptable to the society at large. It also includes a corporate world. These skills are called soft skills because at the levels of both acquisition and delivery, there are individual variations and adaptations. For instance, let me put it this way, two individuals may be equally excellent in presentation but the styles may vary, the content may vary, the structure may vary. So you understand soft skills are more flexible, individualistic and personality related. These skills are acquired, I repeat once more, through social interactions, exposure and adaptability. Uh, I hope you understand these terms, exposure to the society, adaptability to the society, adaptability to your environment, adapt adaptability to your uh, interpersonal relations. Uh, so uh, how a person reacts with another person, how a person comes across in contact with another person, these are uh, dependent on person to person, situation to situation. That is why you say that soft skill development cannot be formally imparted. You cannot go to a college and just uh, take uh, take out the syllabus and study soft skill. It, it is a, as I said earlier, it is a survival instinct. It needs to be learned through adjusting the personality pattern, uh, which conforms to certain acceptable social standard of or norms. Uh, the society has put forth certain standards or norms. You understand those norms, you adapt to those norms, you react and you act, you act and react in accordance to those norms. Uh, you act uh, in that way, society accepts you and you become part of the society. Some of these norms may change over, ta over time and some of these can be country or society specific in practice. Uh, thus, one can say soft skill is a relative concept. Uh, I'll try to explain the sentence once more. That is, the society puts forth certain norms. These norms, these principles, principles can change as time passes by. In one country, you accept a certain norm, but this may not be acceptable in another country. 
or in a society it might be acceptable this might not be acceptable acceptable in another society uh, you practice something in one place it would not be uh, good to practice it in another place so that is why you call soft skill can be a relative concept it is a, a relative thing the basic principles and objectives may be say but it can be changed from situation to situation and it can develop from develop its dimensions from time to time uh, there are many similarities and differences between hard skills and soft skills uh, the similarities are both can be learned formally and informally uh, like you can go to a college or to, or to school and can and you can put, uh, study a hard, hard skill uh, likewise you can go to a college or a school and you can study the soft skills but the process of learning though formal in hard skill uh, such as the technique of mechanical engineering or computer science engineering uh, uh, they, it is a hard skill is just practical learning while uh, soft skill involves an informal process of etiquette uh, social gathering mingling with people uh, who display good manners you adopt those manners you uh, understand those manners you try to mimic those good manners so this is a difference which uh, stands uh, apart from uh, this is the difference you see from uh, hard skill uh, another similarity is both hard skill and soft skill aim at developing human capital or overall efficiency and performance productivity. That is, if, uh, uh, you might uh, understand what is capital investment. If you start a company, you put uh, some uh, capital into it and it develops into a large company because of your efficiency and your uh, the way you uh, um, perform the productivity etc uh, soft skill as well as hard skill can be put into this uh, capital for developing the uh, performance and productivity the difference here is uh, hard skill need not necessarily change the basic personality of a person. For example, an engineer will have more or less the same personality traits as before. Uh, the education need not change the man at the core, but soft skill can transform the personality by dramatically changing the individual's way of speaking, behaving, and the uh, interaction traits, etc. Uh, human behavior here becomes an individualized notion another similarity between soft skill and hard skill is uh, uh, another similarity that occurs in hard skill and soft skill is though a soft skill is not transferable to the same extent as hard skill both can be transferred from one person to another that is a, you if you know some hard skill you can teach another person the same thing in the same manner, uh, if you uh, uh, acquire good manners, you can teach the other person also good manners. But the, there are differences also in this regard. The knowledge and application of hard skills are almost absolute uh, in nature without any individual specific or country specific variation but many of the ingredients of soft skills uh, are country specific in character hard skills can be solid independent of soft skills in the job market while soft skills cannot be sold without the accompaniment of hard skill that is a major difference between hard skill and soft skill the owner of a soft skill must have a critical amount of human capital uh, through job experience, training and working skill in the industrial economy, whereas the hard skill can, can remain 
independent of uh, soft skill but soft skill person should have some hard skill also to sell himself that is the end of this uh, se session today uh, i am i'll be giving you uh, two or three questions on this uh, you just try to answer them uh, i'll be keeping in touch with you in the next session thank you for the time being